Well, good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our service of worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. We're so grateful that you've gathered with us and that it is no longer snowing, I imagine. At the end of May, we're grateful to be uh, gathered and worshiping our God together. And uh, while we begin, we just have a few announcements. If you're sitting near the center aisle, you may be sitting on or near a clipboard. I want to invite you to grab a hold of that clipboard and uh, fill out that information. Check in with us here at the church. Send it on down the pew. And as it gets to you, if you don't recognize a name or two on that list, make sure you change that by the end of our service and introduce yourself to the people who have gathered around you to worship uh, on this uh, wonderful Sunday morning. We'd also like to encourage you, if you happen to have a, a smartphone and a Facebook account, uh, you can log into Facebook and uh, check in here with the world and let everybody on your uh, friends list know what a great place this is to worship God. We'd love to have you do that as well. And while that's going on, we also want to make sure to invite you to uh, join us uh, in our uh, fellowship time. Uh, right after the service, we've got a very special fellowship time, a couple things going on in fact. Uh, the youth are doing a fundraiser uh, brunch, and you may have smelled it on the way in, it smells fantastic, uh, and it's uh, just a free will offering, so uh, come and join us for some, uh, for some brunch, and, uh, and uh, we're also going to be celebrating, as we'll see later on in the service, uh, our graduating high school seniors, and so we've got cake for that too, so we have brunch and cake. It's like heaven uh, at church today, right? Uh, it's fantastic. You don't even have to go anywhere. Just meander back into Fellowship Hall. Get yourself some brunch and some cake. It'll be an awesome time of uh, fellowship. You can uh, get yourself a cup of coffee, find yourself around a table, maybe uh, catch up with some old friends, make some new friends, and, uh, and join in fellowship together on this Sunday morning. We also want to encourage you while you're back there to find your way to, there's some sign-up sheets back there. If you'd like to help us lead our worship service, we value so much our lay people uh, helping us to lead our worship service. If you'd like to sign up for that, the various jobs there, uh, you can do that. You can also sign up to bring flowers. We have beautiful flowers on our altar uh, this morning. And so we'd encourage you to sign up to bring flowers as well in honor or memory of someone in your life. And while you're back there, we also want to draw your attention to the insert in your bulletin. If you all grab hold of that. Uh, we've got lots of words on these inserts, so I want to just uh, mention what they are, and you can go back for all the details. But on the one side, you'll see the win-win-win character there. All right, on that side, it, it's uh, letting you know about our scholarship program, which we are going to see the fruits of that today uh, following our offering as we uh, award some scholarships and give some gifts to our graduating high school seniors. Uh, but we have for years been trying to support as best we can uh, our, uh, our youth who uh, grow up in their faith here in the midst of this community and go out into the world and, and uh, try to tackle it through college or whatever other endeavors they're going on to. And uh, the scholarship fund is uh, supported by your purchasing of King Supers and Safeway gift cards. And so if you purchase gift cards, uh, in the back and use them to buy your groceries every week. Uh, it doesn't cost you a penny, but it goes into supporting uh, this fund that allows us to give these scholarships. You're also able to, uh, to give directly to the scholarship fund if you'd rather just do that. And uh, coming uh, soon, in fact, there's information here about the ability to use uh, debit and credit cards uh, through the PayPal account online. So you can buy them at home online and pick them up here in the uh, church office during the week. Uh, so if that's been a barrier for your uh, supporting uh, that ministry, we'd invite you to do that as well. On the other side, so <coughs> while you're getting your brunch and your cake today, find your way over to the grocery card uh, table and, and get your grocery cards. On the other side is some information uh, about, this has been in the broadcaster, I mentioned it last week, but I wanted just to encourage you and maybe uh, clear up some of the frequently asked questions that I've been hearing from some folks. Uh, I am endeavoring to learn more about each and every one of you. And uh, to do that, we actually have to sit down and talk. I know, it's kind of scary. Uh, there won't be a microphone, I promise. But, uh, but uh, I would like to schedule a time to meet with each and every family in our congregation to get to know you even better as we, uh, as we are uh, fast approaching year number, the start of year number eight together in ministry, which is hard to believe. Uh, we, want, we don't want to be uh, tricked into thinking we know each other when we actually don't know that much. And so I want to dig deeper and, and uh, find out more about you. And I hope that you would be interested in finding more out about me, because you might be stuck with me for a while. And uh, so there's some frequently asked questions here. Some frequently asked questions, and you can go through those. Uh, and if you happen to have a question that's uh, not on there, uh, please come and find me after the service. Uh, I really do. I don't care if you've been here five minutes or 50 years. I want to meet with you. 
And uh, I would love to get to know you and your family. Uh, So take a look at those questions. And if you have any further questions, uh, come and find me after the service. But what I really want you to do is find the sign-up sheet in the back. Uh, It's going to be on the podium as you go back into Fellowship Hall. Uh, And uh, just sign up for a week. If you know you're going to be in town a certain week, just sign up for that week. And I'll be in touch with you uh, to set up a specific time to get together uh, that we can uh, get to know more about each other and and, uh, uh, hopefully discover new ways God can be in ministry through us uh, as we move forward together. So please please find your way uh, into that as well. We also want to mention that there are going to be some cards back there for our preschool teachers. We have uh, an amazing uh, buzz here in the church during the week with all of the kids and the teachers and the parents coming in and out and grandparents dropping off and picking up kiddos. And uh, our teachers just work so hard throughout the whole year. We want to give them a little thank you card. And so uh, there will be cards back there uh, in the fellowship hall. Find them, give them a little sign, let them know how much we appreciate all that they do to nurture the faith of the young uh, kiddos who come in uh, through our preschool uh, program, so uh, find those while you're back there. We also want to mention uh, the microphone is working, and so are our new hearing assist devices. If you uh, have some trouble hearing uh, any part of the service, would encourage you, we've now got eight working hearing assist devices, so if you need a little help uh, hearing what's going on in service and getting the most out of it, uh, you can find your way to the back. they got little headphones, you're all set, and uh, hopefully that will help you as well. That was uh, uh, provided through generous donations from our uh, memorial committee, so we're so excited about, about having more of those available. We also want to mention, as we talk about those, that we are still uh, uh, looking for somebody to take over our uh, audiovisual uh, department here at the church to help with the audiovisual during the service, uh, you're turning on microphones and setting that sort of thing up. And if you are or you know of somebody who is in- inclined in that way, we have uh, an awesome teacher who's willing to uh, help them know uh, what's going on and all the quirks and gremlins that live in our system. And uh, so if you'd like to uh, suggest someone, please find, uh, where's Sue? Sue, right up here, Sue Slaughter, or Carrie, is Carrie here today? I don't think so. So uh, find Sue, she's our co-chair for uh, Staff Parish Relations, and, and they are uh, spearheading our search, so if you, if you have someone in mind, uh, drop a line to Sue and let her know about that. Now, we are always growing as disciples of Jesus Christ, amen? amen. And I want to challenge you, if you haven't already found your way into a class or a Bible study or a prayer group, that you do that, and do it quickly, and we've got opportunities for you today for you to be a part of that if you'd like. Uh, the Seekers class continues their, uh, their walk through uh, the Prayer Warriors uh, text. My group is taking a look at what does it mean to be a member of a church. When we say we pledge our support through our prayers, presence, gift, service, and witness, what does it actually mean to support the church with those things? And so we'll be diving into prayer today. If you want to talk about uh, what it takes to pray for your church, what that means for you, come and join us in the library after uh, brunch and cake. And, uh, and do that. We also have Bible studies and prayer groups that meet throughout the week, and the Gospel Bible Study will be wrapping up our study of the fourth and final Gospel uh, uh, this coming uh, Tuesday at 9 o'clock. So jump in with that if you want to get to know some folks. That group is growing all the time, and we just love to have more people digging into God's Word. So if you want to come and join us for that, 9 o'clock on Tuesday morning, and we'll be uh, diving into a new area starting in June. So it'd be a great time to jump into that group as well. And, of course, we have Vacation Bible School coming up uh, in just a little more than a month, if you can believe that. Uh, A little more than a month, we're going to be packed to the gills with kids and having fun here at Vacation Bible School. Uh, So get your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids, your neighbor kids, get your nieces and nephews, whatever it takes to bring them here to Vacation Bible School, and what a fun week that is uh, for us. We also have a couple of needs if you'd like to volunteer. Uh, We're looking for somebody to help coordinate games. So if you're a high-energy person who loves to uh, squirt water at young children, uh, that would be a good place for you. And uh, and if uh, if you happen to be kind of crafty and you'd like to help lead our crafts for Vacation Bible School, you're going to want to find Deb, who's probably in the kitchen. There she is. Deb's over there. So you're going to want to find Deb and talk to her about what that might mean and how you could be involved in uh, Vacation Bible School leadership. We also we've got a lot going on, right? It's the end of the year. There's a lot going on. Uh, next week, you'll probably remember, is Memorial Day weekend. And uh, so we are going to be honoring uh, those who have served in our armed forces who have passed on from this life into the next. And so if you have somebody in your uh, life uh, that you would like to honor in that way, you want to get the information to Lori Prince, who's sitting here in the front. 
by Wednesday, she says. So if you can get names and information, find Lori and get that to her. Uh, if you've already given it, she's got it. Is that right? So if you've given it in the past, she's got it. But if you have somebody that hasn't been a part of our uh, Memorial Day uh, honoring, uh, be sure to get that to Lori uh, by Wednesday as well. We wanted to mention that the Stephen ministers are going to be doing a training, and I'm going to invite our Stephen leaders, Janice and Sue, up front to mention a couple of details for you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We uh, really have a neat program, I think, going in our church. It's an international, non-denominational program called Stephen Ministry, for any of you who don't know. Um, we tend to do Christian caregiving. We walk beside people who have lost a job, lost a loved one, um, are in spiritual crisis, um, just any need that you feel like you have, we will walk with you through that need. And um, we're looking for some new people to join our group. If you would be interested in that, please let Sue or I know. Um, and we have some, a new training class starting, and that's what you're going to tell us about? Yeah. Um, we ha training classes are 20 sessions. They're two and a half hours each, so we have 50 hours of training for our Stephen ministers. We wanted to start in the fall and be done by Christmas, but it's a little difficult to get that all done, so we're going to meet three or four times during the summer. Our first meeting will be on June 8th in the evening, and that'll be kind of an introductory meeting where we talk about the program and hand out books and just get, get organized. So if anyone is interested in Stephen ministry training, please let Janice or I know and we can help you get started. We'd love to have a whole congregation of Stephen ministers. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Marvelous. Marvelous. And uh, as many of you have noted, uh, the Stephen ministers have been uh, supplying us with uh, marvelous prayer ministry after the service and would invite you, if you have need for uh, further prayer following the worship today, to find the Stephen ministers who will be up here uh, to give you prayer. And also, as we transition from uh, worship in this place to worship in our lives, uh, daily lives, uh, make your way down to the prayer chapel and take part in our drop-in communion uh, that's there any week we don't have communion in our main service. With that, let us greet each other in the peace and love of Christ as we begin our worship service this morning.
And as we enter into this sacred time of worship, I invite you to join with me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Soar we now where Christ has led, following our exalted head. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we come before you today that we might celebrate milestone, that we might join together in fellowship, that we might sing of your praise, that we might give glory and honor to you. But Lord, we come, most importantly, that we might worship you, that we might set our hearts in their proper place, that we might tune our lives into who you are, that we might truly walk the road that you have set before us. Lord, we ask that you would be with us, guiding us, giving us peace, filling us with your spirit. Come into our hearts and warm them, Lord. Come into our minds and inspire them. Take hold of our lives and transform us to your glory, that we would bring you all honor and glory in all that we do. Lord, we ask these things and we come before you in the powerful and the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We have a very special uh, recognition to make today, and uh, to do that, I'm going to bring up those uh, ladies who have been coordinating our, um, our uh, children's education program and our children's church, and uh, just give it over to them that we might uh, recognize and celebrate those who have worked so hard this year. So I would like all of the teachers and the nursery workers and the adult uh, teachers to come on up front, and all of the children to also please come on up front. And while everybody's getting up here, um, I just want to thank everybody that's had um, any part in the Christian education program. It's, um, we are always looking for new people, so if you would like to be part of this energetic, exciting crew, you can um, choose to teach maybe once a year or every month, whatever you would like to do. But, we have an amazing crew up here. 
And I would like to first start off with our nursery attendants who are working with the youngest members of our congregation. So Lucy Chavez and Jayra Rodriguez. Um, I wanted to make sure everybody knew who they were because they are with our littlest. And then also to thank Teresa Kaminsky because she definitely helped out um, before we actually had the attendance um, in place. And she's our sub. <laughs> Um, for the children's church, who work with kind of our elementary students, Andre Perkins and Desiree Sweet Dollar could not make it today, but Sue Slaughter, we have Kent and Michelle Kaiser, and the kids are getting lost, <laughs> Tana and James Hicks, Vicki Geis, and Val Fraley, Patty Overcash, and we have Mike Ovard, and Kristen Leopold. Then we have our dynamic trio um, with Deb Friedholm, Mel Christensen, and Janan Swink, who not only um, help out with Children's Church, but certainly the Christmas pageant. They um, are coordinating Sunday school. Uh, they help with VBS. So they're like just dynamic all over the place. And Mel couldn't be here today, but we'll make sure she gets a, a little gift too. And then for our adult, well, our youth, we have Matt Hunter. Oh, Matt, you should be up here. <laughs> Matt and the youth also take on about five different times throughout the year. We like our, our elementary students to see the youth so that transition um, is a little easier when they jump up into middle school. And then for our adult classes, we have Les Fraley, who also certainly helps out with VBS and every, everything else within the church. And then Reverend Joel, who also helps with... Uh, it, it's Youth, um, National Youth Sunday is in January. Is that what we call that? Yeah. The, yes, that Reverend Joel takes on the youth. And then also his adult classes. So um, a huge, huge thank you to all involved. We couldn't do it without you. But any of the rest of you that would like to join us, please feel free. And I'd like to do a special recognition as well. Uh, over this past year, um, we've been able to do a lot of great things. We've done a lot of uh, fun stuff as well. Um, and uh, a lot of that was possible uh, because of the wonderful help from Deb Friedholm. <laughs> Deb, we got you. Wow, that's... Could, couldn't have done it without her, for sure. <laughs> Wonderful. I think the kids are still passing out. Are we still <laughs> passing out? Oh! <laughs> all right. Well, thank you to all of our teachers, and uh, hopefully they are an inspiration to you all to get involved in helping uh, people grow in their faith together. Now we're going to have the kids join me down front for just a moment. How are you guys doing this morning? Yeah? So-so? You want to be in summer? Well, you only got like a week left. I think three days, I'm told. So there you go. Well, since the box was hiding over there, I'm guessing somebody didn't bring anything. But do you have any guesses? Do you think there's something in there? No. No? Shall we find out? Yes. All right. Let's, let's check it out and see. Ha! There are the bowls left over from last week. So there you go. Well, how many of you had cereal for breakfast this morning? Anybody have cereal? Yeah, I had cereal. 
Yeah, there is. There's like a leaf or something. Well, how are we going to see God in a bowl today? What do you got? <laughs> so, uh, let me get this right. So, uh, bowls contain things just like we contain God's love. Very good. I love that. That's awesome. What else? How else could we see God in our, in our bowls today? It's a bowl? It's a bowl. Mm -hmm. It's just a bowl? It's just a bowl? Are you telling me there's no other way we can see God in the bowl? Are you sure about that? What do you think? No, I can't see anything. God holds our love like we hold his. Absolutely. That's great stuff. That's great stuff. Well, did you know there's a really special bowl that we have here in the sanctuary, and we used it last week. Did you know that? It wasn't these bowls. No, no. It's a very special bowl. And you see that, you see that thing over there with a the cross in it? Yeah? Inside the top of that thing, there is a silver bowl. It's about the same size here. Do you, does anybody know what that is? It's Yep. It's for baptisms. Do you know what it's called? It's called a baptismal font. Yeah. That's a font. That's a baptismal font. <clears throat> That's right. That's right. And did you know that, you know, we pour water into that, into those. Do you guys remember that last week, for those of you who were here last week? We pour water in there, and then we have the children, and we baptize them. Yep. That's right. And we're reminded, we're reminded that Jesus was baptized in the river by John the Baptist, right? But we're also reminded that Jesus tells us to go and baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know what that means, right? No. No. But we go baptizing. You know what that means? It means we go tell people about Jesus and how awesome he is. Yeah, and how much he did for us. Did you know that? That's what he did. That's what it means. So when Jesus says, go and baptize in the world, what he means is go and tell people about me. Go and tell people about Jesus and all that he did for us. Okay? So here's what I want you to do. The next time you see a bowl, so maybe tomorrow at breakfast, right? Or maybe at brunch. Maybe there's some bowls at brunch. Who knows? Okay? But the next time you see a bowl, I want you to think, you know what? I'm supposed to tell people how awesome Jesus is. Okay? And you go and tell someone. All right? Maybe you can use those last three days at school to tell a friend about Jesus. Does that sound like a plan? Awesome. Maybe even invite them to vacation Bible school. Plug for you. Okay. Now, who would like to bring for me next Sunday? Let's see. Who hasn't brought in a while? Hmm. Is Henry going to be here next week, Barb? Henry, do you want to bring for me next time? I'll take that as a yes. All right. Can we all grab a hand? Let's all grab a hand, and let's have a prayer, okay? No. Yeah, that's Henry. I am. That's Henry. We're having a name recognition problem. Okay. Are you ready? All right, let's pray. God, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you so much for all that he did for us. And we thank you for his love, which lives and grows in us, and we see it in these beautiful children. Help us to share the good news of your son, Jesus, with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, and you guys can go back to your families or to Children's Church. share our joys and concerns. Do we have any joys? Oh, Carol, if I can start. Um, I have a couple of, of joys. Two weeks ago, we helped uh, Help for Homes here in Brighton, and I wanted to thank Bob Dexter, Harry Roof, Mike Ovard, Jackie Dahl, Patricia, and Les for helping 
uh, a gentleman get his house painted as well as his uh, shelter. And especially, I want to thank Mike Ovard for selecting such a great person to help. Uh, the second one being, last week was Life of Valor event that was held at First uh, Bank in, in Broomfield. And Russ Slaughter, Doug Swink, and Mike Sheely and myself had gone to that. It was a very dynamic spiritual event where we had uh, three great speakers and some wonderful music. So I just hope that we can share this uh, with the rest of the congregation, the men, especially next year. Thank you. I wanted to share a joy that uh, yesterday afternoon, our chorus group, or a few members of our chorus group, got to share in a 100th birthday party for a good friend of Rick's. Her name is Dot. And she had four birthday parties throughout the week. So I think that, I think that was deserving of 100, 100 years old. And she had so much fun. And the love that we felt uh, from her friends and family that were there was absolutely wonderful. And it was an honor to be a part of that celebration. And of course, everybody in that community loves Rick anyway. <laughs> but um, so, um, yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was really special to be part of that. I'm Glenda Sheely, and uh, I found out this morning that the Boy Scouts are going to have a parking lot sale out here in our parking lot on June 3rd from 8 to noon. And uh, if you want to donate, you should bring it that morning. Or if you want to buy, just come on by. Thanks. I'm Ben Hancock, and I just have a joy of uh, Patsy had surgery and a plate and screws put in her wrist, and she seems to be doing pretty well. She's here with us today, and not only that, uh, last Sunday I told you we may be having a great-grandchild. Well, it was he was born while church was going on last Sunday, so that's number, <laughs> it's a 12th great-grandchild. <laughs> uh, my name is Sue Slaughter, and I had the joy yesterday of participating in the wedding for Hannah and Hector. And it was a lovely ceremony. They had a lot of friends and family here. The youth did a fantastic job of serving a, a brunch reception. And I just, I think they're on their honeymoon now, but when they get back, we have a new married couple in our church. <laughs> also, <clears throat> I do have a concern I want to share with you. A good friend of mine, Terry, who's here today will be having surgery on Friday. So we'd ask you to pray for her and pray for a successful surgery and a quick recovery. Thank you. My joy this morning is that I met from friends who were here in my in our church last year and we got appointed again this morning. And we like to have you stand and <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny Kaminsky. I just wanted to announce that we have another fundraiser coming up. Um, so after you stop at the parking lot sale here on June 3rd, you can go over to Atlas Car Wash and we have a fundraiser going on there. It's June 3rd and June 4th. Um, it's all day, right? Yeah, all day. And they're handing out coupons there for $3 off any wash. So just stop by if you need a new car wash. Good morning. My name is Dwayne Cornell. I'd like to share a concern. Uh, yesterday, our son informed us that uh, him and uh, two members of the unit attended a funeral service for a 22-year-old Marine who took his life. He served in the 4th ID Infantry Quebec Battery, and uh, I do not know all the information of the name, but I think I'd like our church to raise his parents up in prayer, as well as the fallen Marine and those of his unit that he served with. Thank you. My name is Vic Morris, and I've got two uh, announcements. One is I want to congratulate the seniors that are graduating. Keep God in your heart, in your church, in your mind all, at all times. 
The second thing is that next weekend, on the 28th of May, Shirley and I will be celebrating 50th anniversary. Yeah. So with that, we are inviting the congregation to a barbecue. It will start about one o'clock out at our son's place and we ask that there be no gifts whatsoever. We just like to have your presence and uh, we hope to see everybody out there. So uh, just see us um, after church and we'll give you the address as, as to where it's at. Thank you. Hello, I'm Martha Bradfield and I'd like to say that my granddaughter had a bicycle accident. She'll get out of the hospital. Uh, I'm going to my grandson's, my oldest grandson's, um, high school graduation on the 27th. So. <laughs> my name is Leonard McCain, and uh, Chama and I are partners here in this pew. <laughs> we're debating how long we were Christ or Methodists. And I said, well, I think I was a Methodist when I walked across the, the, the railway, the road, to get to the Little Methodist Church in Lyons, Lyons Colorado in about uh, 1942. And she said, well, and I'd make it about 75 years for me. And I turned to her, now, can you beat that? <laughs> Lo and behold, she tells me she's been a Christian for 85 years. Can you imagine that? And I said, what do you mean a Christian? Well, she said, I kind of lost track whether I was a Methodist or not. <laughs> I hope I'm not telling you, telling you a story out of turn. At any rate, I said, well, Methodists and Christians are about the same anyway, right? <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is John Sharp, and I uh, just wanted to let everyone know while I was in Houston a few weeks ago, I proposed to Jill, and despite her better judgment, she said yes. So, I'd like to thank everyone. I'm Val Fraley, and I have my mom with me here today. She's been staying with me since Monday in the nights that we've been driving back to the hospital. My father, stepfather fell and off a treadmill and broke his hip and oh. had to have uh, a plate and, and uh, screws put in that. So he's now moved to rehabilitation and we don't know how long that'll be. So we need prayers for both of them. Any others? I would just lift up that uh, I had uh, the privilege of not only uh, officiating and celebrating in Hannah and Hector's wedding yesterday, I've also done uh, a baptism last Sunday and a funeral uh, to celebrate a, a life uh, this week, and it just reminded me of uh, all of the ups and downs, the joys and the concerns, but uh, the awesomeness of uh, what it is to be in ministry and uh, what it is to be in ministry here. So I just wanted to thank all of you and uh, to let you know what a great privilege it is to be in, in such a dynamic and exciting place to be ministry. Um, I would like to say it's a joy to have Bev back, yes. sitting at the Indeed. piano. Okay, shall we be in attitude of prayer? creating and sustaining God. 
we find ourselves today coming before you in the powerful and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we celebrate with you, Lord, so much, so much that is happening, so much life and joy that is springing forth in the midst of your people this morning, Lord, for all the celebrations of new life, of the longevity of life, of the milestones along the way, Lord. We thank you and give you praise for those. We give you thanks for the blossoming of love in our midst. For the spark of love that you place in our hearts and insist that we share. We ask that you would continue to grow that into a, into a fire, Lord. To burn within us that all would know you because they know us. Lord, we give you thanks for these many joys, for the celebrations to come, for graduates. We ask that you would keep them safe and give them wisdom as they go into this world, as they continue their growth, that they may never be finished in their searching and hungering for you. Lord, we thank you for the teachers that have nurtured us, for those that have continued to Help us grow as disciples to seek you ever more clearly. And Lord, in the midst of spring blossoming around us and joys abounding, we are also aware that, that there is fear and trepidation. That some have received bad news, that some are facing diagnosis and surgery and healing. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to be a healing and peaceful presence in their lives. That you would pour out your peace that passes all understanding on them. The fires of these trials might only serve to strengthen their faith in you that we might all come to know you, to rely on you, to put our faith and hope in you, Lord. And we pray for health and wholeness, for healing, miraculous, gradual and instant in the midst of these lives lifted up here. And we lift all of these prayers to you, Lord. We hand them over to you in the powerful and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Those that escape our lips and those that live deep within our souls. For we're reminded that He taught us how to live. And that He shows us how to love. And now we come together in prayer as He taught us to pray. Our Father... Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to invite us to stand as we are able, as we join in uh, the spirited song, Lord, You Have Come to the Lake Shore. It's hymn number 344. Let us join our voices together in song.
be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Our reading today is from John 21, 1 through 14. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have no, have no fish? You have no fish, have you? And they answered him, no. And he said to them, cast your, the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now there were, they were not able to haul it in because there were so many of the fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far off from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw the charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to, the, to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Grace be yours and peace from Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to encourage you, if you uh, haven't already, to grab your Bible and open it to that passage at the end of John's Gospel. And if you didn't happen to bring your Bible, don't worry, we've got you covered. There's some Bibles right there in the pew back in front of you. And if for some reason you don't have a Bible to go home to today, we want to make sure to change that. We've got a stack of Bibles, so on your way to brunch and cake, you can stop and get a hold of a copy of God's Word and take that home that it might uh, nourish and fuel your faith. Uh, uh, so, so please don't leave today if you don't, if you don't have a copy of, uh, of the Bible to go home with. We've been in the midst of this series, The Cross Road. Now normally The Cross Road, as you'll remember from previous weeks, is the place where two roads come together and there's a choice to be made. But that's not the cross road we're talking about in this series. The cross road we're talking about is the road that we walk in light of the cross. I don't know if you realize this, but Resurrection Sunday is kind of a big deal. Jesus raising from the dead was kind of a big deal. And the question is, what do we do as people of the resurrection? What is, how does that change our lives? What impact is that supposed to have on who we are as people of God? Well, we've been going through, first we... We started by relating to truth. The way we relate to truth is we believe it. Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Those who believe in me may have eternal life. It's important for us to remember that we must believe the truth that is there. Then we talked about how fear can distort our joy. It is joyful. It is, it is a, a source, a wellspring of joy. This resurrection of Jesus, this cross road that we walk, yet fear of the unknown, fear of the mystery, fear can distort our joy. And then we walked along the road to Emmaus and we examined how our expectations can blind us to what is right in front of us. 
When we expect not to find Christ there in front of us, we won't find it. We'll be blinded by our expectations. And then last week we talked about how critical it is that we take off those blinders and we actually encounter Christ in our everyday lives. Well, today, today I want to talk about our tendency to try to manufacture the road. Our human desire that often gets in the way when we try to manufacture the road. I want to begin by asking what's in a list. You ever have one of these moments where you're reading along in Scripture and there's a detail or something that seems like it might be a little more than you need to know? Anybody? Anybody have that moment? Where you're just reading along and you're like, geez, there's a list of these disciples here at the beginning of our reading today. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Uh, for those of you who, who uh, don't have a study Bible in front of you, Tiberias is just another name for the Sea of Galilee. So they're at the Sea of Galilee, uh, the scene where, where Jesus had called many of his disciples from a life of fishing to a life of following and then a life of being sent. So they're at the shore of the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. And here's, here's, what, here, here's what I mean by a list. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, who have the coolest nickname. Have you ever, you ever realized that the sons of Zebedee, they're called the sons of thunder? Doesn't that sound like a pro wrestler name? I just love that. The, the sons of thunder, okay? play on the offensive line. So the, the two others, uh, these two other disciples who, who don't get names, we're sorry for them, right? They're just along for the ride. But you ever wonder why there's a list of disciples there? You ever wonder like, okay, so he could have just said Peter and some of the disciples were hanging out at the Sea of Galilee. Why, why the list? Why the list? Well, it's important for us to note who these people were, who these people were. Check this out. So Simon Peter, okay, Simon Peter was a fisherman. Okay, Now, Thomas the twin and Nathaniel of Canaan, we don't really know what they did, but they were called around the same area, and they're hanging out with a bunch of fishermen, and they go fishing in this scene. So some have speculated that maybe they were fishermen too. We don't know for sure. But then we get to the sons of Zebedee. That's James and John, and James and John were not only fishermen, they, they owned a fishing business with their father, and they were working with Peter when they were all called. So we're talking about some commercial fishermen here. Okay? Three of them at least. And then there's these two other disciples that are unnamed. So there are seven disciples in this group. At least three of them were professional fishermen. At least three of them, probably more, were professional fishermen. So when Peter says, I'm going fishing, I don't know about you, but sometimes I just pictured that, you know, a piece of straw on his thing, you know, uh, rod over his shoulder, heading out to the Sea of Galilee. You know, that was my picture of fishing when I was a kid, right? That's all I knew, and I was terrible at it, by the way. I've shared that before, okay? Terrible, still terrible at fishing. Sorry, guys. Don't understand it, but it's okay. But when Peter says, I'm going fishing, he's not saying, I'm going fishing like you or I would go, you know, kill an afternoon by the lake, or maybe spend a day in the stream when Peter says, I'm going fishing, he's not messing around. He's talking about <clears throat> getting in a boat and going out in the Sea of Galilee and dropping down the nets that he spent <clears throat> years working as a professional fisherman. And we know this, obviously, as we get later into the story as they're casting their nets. On the other side, Peter's not talking about hauling in one or two fish for a little fish fry. He's going back to his life before Jesus called him as a disciple. And the others, he says, I'm going fishing. And the other six say, we will go with you. Let's go fishing. Right? This isn't a band of friends going out to kill an afternoon. This is, these are professional fishermen returning to their life. Now this is after the resurrection, people. Jesus has appeared to them. It says at the beginning, this is the third time Jesus appears to them on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. But they have returned to be fishing. They're not just casting a line to kill time. Fishing with these nets, they were 
commercial fishermen going back to their former profession. They're going back to what they knew before they met and got to know Jesus. They weren't sure quite what to do. Jesus was gone. They were following him around. That seemed like an easy plan, right? Jesus says, come and follow me. Okay, I'm, where's Jesus? I can see him. I'm going to follow him. There, there he is. Okay, he's doing some weird stuff, but that's okay. I'm, I'm with him. Okay, he's saying some weird things, but I'm still here with him. Oh, they, they arrested him in the garden. I don't know if I'm quite with him anymore. And then they crucify him, and now they're really scratching their heads, and, but they're pretty sure that life is supposed to be different, and yet they're not sure how it is, and then he shows up to them. He is brought back to life. He is resurrected from the dead, the firstborn from the dead, and he appears to them, and, well, you or I would be pretty confused by that, wouldn't we? We wouldn't be completely certain about what to do. We're still digesting what that is, and what do we do? What do we do as human beings, naturally, when we're not sure what to do? We go back to what we know. We go back to what we know, and that's what these disciples were doing. They weren't sure quite what to do. They probably wondered if they could even do what they were called to do, so they went back to what they do best. They go back to fishing. Rather than confidence in Christ, following where He leads them, they tried to manufacture their own road by doing what was comfortable. They tried to go their own way and not Jesus' way. They went back to what was comfortable. Now, how many of us, after I paint that picture, how many of us would have to admit that that's been our story from time to time? How many of us would have to admit that maybe we had that moment where Christ took hold of our lives and we were so convicted and yet we weren't sure what to do and so we just kind of went back to life as usual? We kind of went back to what was going on because you see so much of our everyday lives don't naturally bring us back to that moment when we started to follow Jesus. Maybe they thought, well, we'll just get the band back together. We'll go back to what we were doing when Jesus came along and maybe something else will happen. Maybe that's what they were doing. We're not sure. We just know they went back to what they knew. Do you go back to what you know? What about Monday morning when you go back to that desk or that job or that counter or that computer or that office or those house chores or those grocery lists or the whatever fills your life on a day-to-day -day basis? How many of us just go back to life as usual, try to manufacture our own way? We're not always good at the things that Jesus calls us to do right away. And I can remember in, in seminary, I took this class called uh, on spiritual disciplines. Now, spiritual disciplines seems a little harsh, but really all they're talking about is what Wesley called the means of grace. They are the things that put us in touch with our spiritual connection with God. And this would include things like you hear from me all the time, uh, reading your scriptures, uh, praying, praying. Uh, taking part in communion, uh, service, lots of different elements there that connect our faith to God. We got to prayer. We got to prayer, and we started talking about prayer in the life of the believer, and we had to sit around in these small groups and talk about what our prayer life was like. And I had to honestly just make something up, frankly. I was trying to make anything sound like prayer in my life because I didn't really have much of a prayer life at the time. I honestly didn't. I didn't really know what that was like. I was too busy trying to manufacture my own road, you see. And so I made up something about how, well, I pray through my music and I play my guitar and I sing and that's my prayer to God and etc. But I didn't really understand what prayer was. No one had ever taught me about what it meant to pray and why you would do it. I had never done an exhaustive study of scripture to find out what prayer was all about. Now, many of you have been su subjected to that recently. Right? We spent like eight weeks talking about prayer over Christmas, right? So prayer has become a significant part of my life as I pray it has become for yours. But at the time, prayer wasn't. 
wasn't comfortable with it, didn't know how to do it, wasn't sure if it even did any good. And rather than say, I'm going to learn about this and I'm going to lean into this and I'm going to seek the Lord through this, I just passed off the stuff I was already doing in my every or everyday ordinary life as though it were the thing I should have been doing all along. How many of you can relate to that? Gee, I, I know I should have read that scripture, but you know, I listened to Pastor Joel preach for like 40 minutes last Sunday, so I think we're okay. That's got to get me at least through Thursday, right? I can go longer if you need to get through Friday. Trust me, the... I'm not going to run out of material here, I promise you, okay? <laughs> but how many of that is your, is your experience? Where we try to pass off the everyday ordinary things that we do, the things that are comfortable, the things that are natural as the only things we should be about as followers of Jesus Christ. Like these disciples, it always seems easier to return to what we know. It's just easier. Let's face it. There's not as much resistance, there's, there's not as much to overcome, there's nothing left to learn, we just kind of go back to what we know, stick to what is familiar. The trouble is, the trouble is that just like these disciples, when we try to do that, ultimately we fail miserably. When we make excuses instead of putting in the time Focusing our lives, learning to lean into God, we fail miserably. It's important for us to remember these are professional fishermen who are going back to what they did best, where they made their living. These are not people like me who have caught two fish in their entire life. These people are these, these men are used to hauling in nets full of fish, enough that they could not only feed themselves, but they could make a living by selling it to those who bought their fish. Just after daybreak, in verse 4, Jesus stood on the beach. Oh, they caught nothing. Sorry, right before that. They went out and they got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Whole night they caught nothing. And just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach. I mean, these, imagine if you went in to do your job and you completely failed at it. Can you imagine what, that, what that's like? Just completely failed at it. You're a car salesman and you don't sell a car for a month. You're a preacher and you can't come up with a sermon for weeks. You're a lawyer and you lose every case. You're a housewife and your house is a mess. You're a stay-at-home dad, and for some reason, your kids are driving you nuts. Anybody have this problem? <laughs> Glad I'm not alone. The trouble is, when we try to do our own thing without the Lord, we will fail miserably, just as these disciples did. They failed not just at something they tried, but at something they did best. So I want to talk about four problems with manufacturing our own road. If we're going to walk the road the cross road with Christ in light of the resurrection. There are four things, four problems with manufacturing our own road that we, that we can think about, okay? First of all, if you're trying to manufacture your own road, you might be going the wrong way. In fact, it's probably a good bet that you are going the wrong way. If you're trying to manufacture your own road, you could be going the wrong way. Now, if you're going the right way, if you're going the right way, you're probably doing it the hard way. You follow me? I don't know if you remember this back during the Super Bowl. This is uh, sort of another weird football reference, but just go with me here for just a moment. There were these uh, Old Spice deodorant commercials where Von Miller, you know, the great Von Miller from the Broncos, uh, is trying to get to the Super Bowl stadium, and rather than take the road that's already made, he's going to make his own road, right? And that's sort of their slogan, make your own road, right? And so he's manufacturing, he's got this jackhammer and he's got this hard hat and, he's make, and he makes about 10 feet of this road and it looks like there's a desert between him and this stadium, right? That's the way we are. When we try to manufacture our own road and we're going the right way, if, usually we're not, but if we happen to be going in some version of the right way, it's almost always, in fact, I'll, I'll go out on a limb here and say always the hard way. 
When we're trying to go the right way without the Lord, it's, it's going to be doing it the hard way. It's going to be doing it the hard way. Third problem with trying to go manufacturing our own road is that there is a high probability for detour. You might be going the right way. You might even be going the hard way, but at least you're going in the right direction. But there's almost always going to be detours that are going to derail and take you off course and send you into a spiral. Because if you're going your own way without the Lord and life happens, and trust me, it will, you're going to want to be on the Lord's way, not our own. There's a high probability for detour. And then finally, this ultimately, you're not going to get where you're going. We're not going to be able to walk this road in light of the cross, apart from God. So it's not a good idea for us to go manufacturing our own way. Listen to Paul write to the Ephesians in chapter 2. He says, by, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not the result of works, so that one may boast. It is by grace that we walk this road through faith. It's not by our own doing. It's by following Christ. These disciples were trying to make their own way. We'll go and make disciples of Jesus Christ and spread the good news throughout the world and we're going to go back to our old homes doing our old job. And that's not a good plan. So Jesus comes along to remind them that that's not a good plan and to get them back on track. And so we're going to take a look here now at four things, four things about doing it Jesus' way. All in favor of doing it Jesus' way? Amen? Amen. All right, four, way, four things to learn from this text about how to do it Jesus' way. How to do it Jesus' way. The first thing is the same work is unimaginably more fruitful when you do it Jesus' way. The same work is unimaginably more fruitful when you do it Jesus' way. Check out the text, starting in verse 4, just after daybreak. Remember, they've been at it all night, and they haven't caught a thing. Not just haven't caught much, haven't caught anything. Okay? The text says, that night they caught nothing. Miserable failure. Their own plan sucked. It was really awful. But after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And he says to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? Notice that's not a, do you have any fish? That's a, you have no fish, have you? You have no fish, have you? That's, that's sort of the, I told you what to do, and now you're not doing it, and you're wondering why it's not going well. Right? You have no fish, have you? Jesus knows the answer to that question. That's clear just in the way it asks. You ever ask your, ch your children that question before? You've been up to something, haven't you? There's no question they've been up to something. It's just a matter of whether they'll admit it, right? How many of us will stand on the boat and, No, we're doing fine, Jesus. Anybody in that, in that camp? That's a bad plan too, right? Okay, so all in favor of not doing that. They say no. At least they're honest, right? And he says to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. How many of you know that's exactly what they've been doing? This isn't a matter of you're teetering on this weird vortex where fish are on this side and not on that side and you happen to be fishing out of the left side of your boat, foolish fisherman. So cast your net off the right side of the boat. But they're back to following Jesus, you see, that Casting the net on the right side of the boat is back to following Jesus. It's back on Jesus' plan, and so the same work, the exact same work, is immeasurably more fruitful. As we read later, 156 fish, almost breaking the net, but not. 53, 153, okay, sorry. <laughs> This is why I have you open the Bible. Keep me honest, okay? I think I'm just joking about that. So 153 fish almost break the net. How many of you know 153 fish is a lot more than nothing? Right? 
You're going to live a lot longer with 153 fish in your net than nothing, right? Their way, miserable failure. Jesus' way, unimaginably fruitful. Something to remember. Four things about doing it Jesus' way. The same work. It might not even be that you're doing the wrong thing. It just might be that you're not doing it in the right spirit. That you're not following Jesus in doing it, but you're just sort of going through the motions. And honestly, that makes a difference. It makes a difference. If you're going to work and you're doing the same work, but you're doing it under your own power, you probably won't witness to a single person in your office. You probably won't mention Jesus in an entire day's worth of work in whatever you're doing, home or away. But if you do whatever it is you do, filled with the Spirit of Jesus, you will not be able to keep from spreading the gospel. You will not be just doing your job. You'll be doing your job as a person of faith. Immeasurably more fruitful. Same work. Second thing, following Jesus is a team effort. Okay? Now, we often talk about following Jesus as though it's a solo sport, all right, as if it were some sort of golf game. But the truth is that following Jesus is really better in a team. It's really better in a team. Check it, check it out here. Cast your net on the right side of the boat. So they cast it out, and they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. Remember, there were seven grown men in this boat. That's how many fish they caught. Just keep that in mind. And the disciple whom Jesus loved, that would be John, the author of the gospel, said to Peter, it is the Lord. And Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord. He put on some clothes because he was fishing naked, and he jumped into the sea, and he swims to the shore. We find out it's about 100 yards. So he swims about 100 yards. He, just, he hears it's the Lord, and he just leaps off the boat and swims to the shore. That's the solo part. That's the part where we all have to dive in head first and be a follower of Christ. But you see, the others come in the boat later. The others follow in the boat. They don't just say, Peter, let us know if it's Jesus. We'll be right there. <laughs> they immediately start coming, right? Simon Peter jumps in and swims, but the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not too far off from land, only about 100 yards off. And then you jump over to verse 11, and it says, Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of... So he gets to the shore, and Jesus says, go grab some fish. And he goes, I'll be right back. And he goes over, and he, they have brought the net. It's a team effort, you see. They all get to the same place. They might not get there at the same time, but they're going to work together. This following Jesus, doing it Jesus' way, is always better as a team. That's why we have church. That's why this is so important. That's why when I say we're always growing as disciples of Jesus Christ, I immediately invite you to join a group. I immediately invite you to participate in a Bible study or come to prayer group or come to a Sunday school class because this is not a solo thing. On your own, you will get lost. But together, we can find our way the way of the cross. It's not a team effort, or it is a team effort. So first of all, it's more fruitful, same work, more fruitful with Jesus. Secondly, following Jesus is a team effort. Here's the third thing. Following Jesus is not necessarily easier. Okay? This is really important for us to get, okay, because there are some folks who will promise you that following Jesus, your life will be fine. How many of you know Jesus says that it, it'll be better, it just won't be easier? He says, take up your cross and follow me. He says, those, will persecute you, those in power will persecute you in my name for the gospel that I'm sending you to preach. How many of you know that it's going to be better, it just might not be easier? The difference is when we're in the midst of the not easier, we have God on our side. We have the light of Christ in our lives showing us the way and what would be hard without Christ is manageable with 
not just manageable, but we can celebrate and praise God through the hardest times in our life when we live that life with Christ. And look at verse 11. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net full of large fish, 153 of them. There were so many that the net, but the net was not torn. Doesn't mean that it's going to be easier. It just means you're going to be on the right path. Following Jesus does not necessarily mean your life is going to be easier. And then there's this. And this is really important for us to understand. I mean, really important. If you get nothing else out of today's sermon, this is what I want you to understand, okay? Get your pencil sharpened. You ready to go? Here we go. Look at verse 9. We skipped a couple of verses there. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus already had breakfast for them. He doesn't need any of the 153 fish they just caught listening to him. There's already breakfast. Cooking on the fire. Ready to go. But listen to what Jesus says. Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. And that's when Simon Peter jumps into the water and hauls in the net. So here's what I want you to get. This is so important. Are you ready? Jesus doesn't need your work. Jesus doesn't need your work, but he desires your contribution. Do you understand the difference there? Jesus doesn't need your work. No matter what you're good at, no matter what you do, no matter what you have to contribute, Jesus doesn't need it. How many of you know the God of the universe doesn't need anything from you or me? How many of you know the kingdom of heaven will come, is coming, not because of you and me, but because of God. Jesus doesn't need you or me and our work, but he desires our contribution. You see that? He doesn't need any of the fish they just caught through their casting the nets, according to his instruction. He doesn't need any of that. He's already got breakfast cooking. He's got it covered. But yet he still says, go and bring some of the fish that you just caught. Do you see the difference there? This is, this is hard for us to wrap our mind around because we think we're working for God. We think we're, we're contributing. We're doing our part. And that's important. But it's important for us to realize that it's our contribution is a fruit of our faithfulness. We aren't bringing about faith in ourselves. Remember, we are saved by faith. We are saved by faith. So it's not that God needs us to work. God wants us. And isn't that so much better? Isn't that so much better when we can say, God doesn't need me to go to church today, but God wants me to be there that we might get closer to Him. God doesn't need me out on the streets feeding somebody who is homeless or giving something, some shelter to someone who has nothing or helping somebody discover new life in Christ. God doesn't need me to make those things happen. But God wants my contribution. God wants you and I to give what we have in service to Him. We can't go around building our own road. We can't go around manufacturing our own way. We need to be about following Jesus' way. We need about following the road set before us to living life in light of the cross that we might become so much more fruitful, so much more fruitful doing the same work that we might recognize that God desires our contribution. Are you ready to give it? Let's do it together. Amen. Amen.
being comfortable, making it easier, not so threatening, no chance of rejection. Put it on cruise control. Not sure that's really what Christ wants out of us, right? Step aside, put Christ on the road ahead of you. Grab a hand of someone around you, right here amongst us. We can do this together for what Christ wants in our lives and walk that crossroad together with Christ leading us. That's what our offerings show through our service and our commitments and also through our tithes and offerings shows the fruitfulness to our God, to Christ our Savior. May the ushers come forward.
how to use these for the blessings of our church, for the missions and the ministries in and outside of these walls. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. 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 Please be seated for just a moment. I'm going to invite uh, the chairperson of our scholarship committee, Barb Whittern, to come and, uh, and uh, uh, introduce to you. Uh, we have three uh, seniors, uh, high school seniors, who will be graduating, uh, who have been a part of our congregation. And uh, uh, the scholarship committee is, uh, has uh, met to decide how we will uh, attempt to bless them in the next part of their life. And so we'll turn it over to Barb, and uh, we'll uh, recognize these seniors. When I say the senior's name, would they please come forward along with their parents? Then, Reagan Burr, Skylar Ellis, and Wesley Swink. And I'd like to have the graduates say what they plan to do, where they're going to go to school next year then. Hi, I'm Skylar, and I'm planning on going to CSU for their psychology degree, and they are probably do something in music, most likely. So. Hi, I'm Wes, and I'm going to Larry, uh, Larry, Larry Mee County Community College in Wyoming, um, and I'm going for like wildlife studies. Um, I'm Reagan, and I'm going to the University of Nebraska at Lincoln, and I'm going to study accounting. Very good. So we wish you good luck in your endeavors then. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yes, indeed. We are so grateful for our seniors and for all that this church has uh, done to support and help them grow in their faith. And uh, we want uh, to invite you again to join us in the fellowship hall for brunch, but also for cake that we might uh, get to celebrate with them as they uh, take this next step in their journey. So, blessings to you. And as a reminder, we will begin to transition uh, here from worship in this place to the worship of our everyday living. And uh, through that, we want to invite you, if you have need for more prayer, uh, following the service to come and uh, take advantage of the prayer ministry up here at the front of the sanctuary. And uh, as you leave today, be sure to drop into the uh, prayer chapel and take part in communion as we, uh, as we seek the Lord uh, with every moment of our day. Now, may we stand and join together in our benediction song.
And now may you go out into this world not building your own way, but following Jesus' way. Go into this world and share with all that He is risen. He is risen indeed. Go in peace. You are loved. Amen. 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 Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of our lives.